Today we are doing curved surface engraving using the F1 Ultra. This machine is going to allow us to engrave on any curved surface and get a beautiful, even result. I'm gonna walk you through the process from start to finish. Hey, I'm Sarah, you're watching Creative Ramblings. We talk a lot about lasers on this channel. So if you're a laser user or you're thinking about getting one, hit that subscribe button. You will definitely find videos here that are useful in your creative journey. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to engrave on a curved surface like this wooden bowl or a bead or even a spoon. We're gonna be doing this curved surface engraving with the F1 Ultra. There are other X-Tool machines that can engrave on a curved surface, but I thought it was easier to go one machine at a time. So if you already have an F1 Ultra, we're gonna walk through this so that you can confidently go and make your own curved surface engravings. If you do not yet have this machine, let me tell you a little bit about it. This is a phenomenal beast of a laser. It is really big, it is really tall. Unlike lasers like that behind me, that's the S1, that is kind of a wide laser. This is called a Galvo style laser. So the laser module sits right in here, up in top. You put your item down here and the laser kind of moves back and forth to engrave or cut whatever you're using. On a gantry style laser like that one behind me, the laser moves back and forth on an X and Y axis to engrave and cut your items. The biggest thing that means for a laser like this is that it is really, really fast. The F1 Ultra has both a 20 watt diode and a 20 watt fiber laser in it. Between those two, you can engrave almost anything. So anything from metals to wood to acrylic and everything in between, you can engrave with this machine. You can also cut very thin, thin metal with that fiber laser. The other feature in here that we're gonna talk about today is this curved surface engraving. So typically, when you have a laser, you need to set the focus on a single point of material so that the laser knows its depth. And then it, accordingly, you will set the power and the speed and it will engrave. On something like this, we're gonna tell the laser what to do and it's gonna create a depth map for the more shallow pieces here and the deeper pieces here to give us a beautiful even engrave across the whole thing. X-Tool makes this a pretty simple process, but if you've never done it before, it's very different than just engraving on a flat surface. So let's head over to X-Tool Creative Space, walk through that whole software, and then let's engrave this bowl. We can also do a couple of these too, just to show you all the different ways and all the different projects that you can do. The first thing I wanna do is start with a graphic. So I am gonna upload a pretty floral graphic that I like. This is an SVG and you can see it's in a lot of different pieces. So before I touch anything, I'm just going to combine it so that I can move it around without breaking it apart. So I have this set to engrave. So a couple things we wanna do here. Let's connect the device. Now my device is connected. The next thing I wanna do is select my material. And the wood I'm using for engraving this bowl is kind of an unknown wood, but it is very light and it does have some grain to it. So I can do a couple things here. I can test on the back of it and try to get an idea of what settings I need, or I can just go for it. I highly recommend testing first, but we're gonna select this three millimeter maple here. And then I'm going to get a reference graphic to kind of understand the settings. Because this is wood, we are using the blue light laser, power of 90, speed of 400, lines per centimeter of 160. So I've got my machine connected, I've got the material selected and the settings picked. And now I need to tell the F1 Ultra that we are doing this on a curved surface. So up on the very top where it says process on flat surface, I'm gonna click on that, scroll down and click curved material. 
Now notice the F1 Ultra does have a camera, but we are not using the camera here because we are not positioning this based on camera. We are actually gonna go right up here and measure this. So I'm gonna put the bowl into the F1 Ultra and then we're gonna measure. So we are going to rely on framing. So right now we have this set at 50 here. And if I hit framing and then look at the bowl, I'm gonna see where the square is. And that's gonna tell me how big my flower is gonna be. So that's a little small. So I do need to increase this. I can also drag these corners until I get that box perfect. I'm also able to unlock if I don't want a perfect square. I'm really happy with the placement of this box. It goes up the sides a little bit. Now keep in mind that this square is the square of my F1 Ultra. So the bottom part here is the front. So keep that in mind when we're positioning our design. So let's hit next. This is going to start measuring. So I'm gonna hit start and you can see exactly what's happening here. This little dot is going to move across all 14 rows and all 14 columns and take depth measurements in each of those places. So that as the laser engraves across the bowl, it is going to get an accurate measurement in each square. So this process does take a while with 14 columns and 14 rows you can adjust this. So I could go down to 10 or five, but it's only going to measure each square. So if you want something super, super, super detailed, go with the amount of rows and columns that they have. You can always scale it back the more you do these if you find that you don't need as many. And this is what we get with that measurement. And I can actually move it around and see a 3D look of it. This is the bowl that we're going to engrave in. Let's hit done and we can place our design. So this is the design here. We already have the settings for this. It has to be placed in this box. It cannot go onto the gray area. It has to stay within the white. And once I'm happy with this, because we've already set everything else, we can go ahead and process. engraving on a wood bead. Now I want to show you something that could be a software glitch. It could be a user error, but it's something that I've come into contact with and I want you to be aware of it. So if I choose curved surface processing first, then I'm just going to bring in a letter and let's pick a fun font for that letter. So I want to engrave this letter on a bead and I've selected curved material, but I haven't measured yet. So this is still the measurement from the bowl. I want to go up and pick my material. Now I'm only given recommended materials that would work with like a rotary tool. I can go to more materials and here I'm going to get everything. So these beads are made out of wood, um, really, really light wood. I'm assuming it's basswood and I'm able to come in here and pick F1 Ultra blue light. I can't pick curved surface, but I can pick engrave. And then from here, I'm able to pick some settings and add it to XCS. The problem is those settings don't come down to here. What I'm actually getting is it's showing me that my engraving method is dotting, which is really only supposed to be used when you're getting a bitmap or an image like a PNG or a JPEG for curved surface engraving like this with an SVG, you really wanna do scanning, but those settings aren't coming over. So what I found you have to do is start with the process on flat surface, then pick your settings. I can pick what I need right here. 
And then once I'm happy with those settings, then I can go ahead and choose curved material. I'm going to go through the same process with this bead that we did with the bowl. This time it's going to be much smaller, so we can measure here. And if I'm happy with that, we can go ahead and hit next. This time we have a much smaller area to measure. So there is our bead. It does say that it contains some unsmooth parts. This is a pretty rough basswood. I've done a couple of these beads. I think it's going to be just fine. But if you come into contact with that and it does cause poor results, you can always sand it down first. So I'm going to blow up my screen here and get this letter into the bead. Now we're going to hit process. And the other thing that I've noticed is when you're doing curved material engraving, you do not get an estimated processing time. You can still see the whole trajectory here, but usually down in the corner and then on the F1 screen, you're going to see processing time. You don't get that here. So we're just going to kind of wing it. This bowl turned out just beautiful. I absolutely love that engraving and how it goes up the sides here. Curved surface engraving is a really big game changer for a laser because it allows us to work with items that are not flat. So it's hard to tell in here, but yes, this bowl is curved on the side, but it's a very old bowl. And so the bottom of it is actually quite uneven. And part of the measuring, allowed us to measure all of these uneven parts and really get an even engrave all the way across. Once you do this a couple times in the software, it's going to become second nature and just really easy to do. So I hope this tutorial gave you enough information to go out and start doing this on your own. I said earlier, you can do curved surface engraving with other machines, including the P2 and the S1. Very different processes because those are both gantry style lasers and one has a camera, one doesn't. So let me know down in the comments if you want a tutorial video on how to do curved surface engraving with those other machines. I'd be happy to put that together for you. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'm here every week with new videos helping you move forward in your creative journey. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.